Alright, what is up everyone? DSP here, and uh, welcome to a special vlog. This is a video that wasn't really like something that I had massively planned on doing or whatever, but I find myself having a little bit of free time during the week, and I wanted to talk a little bit about my overall thoughts. Oh, my shirt is crooked. Who cares? About my overall thoughts about Street Fighter V's beta, and my thoughts about the game. Sorry, I had a little echo there because my door wasn't closed. Uh, my thoughts about the game after having played it twice now, both in the first official beta that kind of happened in July, then got cancelled, but then they had those kind of re uh, region tests where I had a chance to play with a few of the characters, and then actually finally getting a real chance to play the beta here in the second wave that happened in uh, late October of 2015, okay? Um, a lot of people have been saying to me, Phil, what do you think about the game overall? Do you think that it's as good as Street Fighter 4? Do you think that it is more of a throwback game like Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo? Uh, what do you think about the character selections and stuff like that? And in general, I'll be honest. I, just from the, 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 the few hours that I've gotten to play this beta, I can tell you that it is very different from Street Fighter 4, okay? This is not going to be a game where it's all about memorizing this one combo, this one pattern, and doing it over and over and over. From everything that I've seen, from everything that I'm experiencing with this game, uh, it's going to be more about uh, matchups. It's going to be more about footsies, reactions, and more about the overall game than just, oh, I have a character, I've memorized this one top tier strategy that, that works with everything, and I just do it every single match no matter what, and I win. And unfortunately, that was a lot of what came out in Street Fighter 4. You would find the, your character and this one really great combo and or strategy that you could use over and over and over. And you could do it in a ton of matches, and it would dominate most of the cast, right? And I don't know if that's going to be this case, the case in this game. This game might actually be more of a throwback to the original Street Fighter games where every character has a good or bad matchup depending on who you're fighting. And yeah, there is a way for every character to win every matchup, but you have to really like play the hell out of your character to learn those matchups. And you almost have to understand every single character in the game to know exactly what to do. Now, I could be completely wrong. Keep in mind, the little that I've played... I certainly, have, certainly haven't gotten an extensive amount of matches or whatever because the matchmaking of the beta has had a lot of problems. It seems like every time that I scheduled a block of time to play these betas, either the matchmaking wouldn't work or all of a sudden now they're doing 12 hours of maintenance, which they originally hadn't planned earlier in the week and stuff like that that kind of didn't allow me to really play as much as I had originally wanted to. But from what I can see... The game does seem like it's going to be more about fundamentals, it's going to be more about reactions, and it's going to be less about muscle memory of this combo that's insane and does monstrous amounts of damage and just get to that one setup where you can use the combo and dominate and win. Or one really abusive strategy where you can do the same thing over and over and over. It seems like there's going to be more variety, okay? When it comes to the character selection, at this point they've now announced the entire cast of the original launch game, which by the way has a launch date, I believe it was like February... 16th or 18th of 2016 don't quote me on that it's like the second week of february of 2016 and it is an interesting mix because you've got some originals right <clears throat> from the original street fighter games and some from older street fighter games that are coming back and then you've got newer characters who you've never seen before and it does seem to be kind of a unique mix of old you know or, or returning i should say returning and then old characters that haven't been around for a while, and then brand new. And I like that, because, uh, let's face it, Street Fighter 4, when it came out, it was a good mix, and all of a sudden, let's add this character, let's add this character, let's add this character, and by the time you were done with Street Fighter 4, you had so many fucking characters in it, that it was like, well, who's not in this game? You know what I mean? And I'm happy that they're going outside of that, they're kind of breaking that mold. Although, I will say this, it's a little weird to me, that all of the characters who were new in Street Fighter 4, think about it, right? All of the brand new characters like Rufus and Sea Viper and stuff like that, they're not in Street Fighter 5. And that's a little bizarre to me that they've kind of decided, oh, well, there was a whole new cast of characters we added that became a, you know, a tried and true part of the Street Fighter universe. Well, they're not in Street Fighter 5. Although, Capcom has done this before. If you actually look at Street Fighter 2 to 3, right? They didn't keep all of the characters. They only kept a very select few and then added all new characters. Three to four. They ditched almost all the characters from Street Fighter 3 when Street Fighter 4 originally launched. And then over time, they added them. And that is an important thing that needs to be mentioned here. Is that the game plan for Street Fighter 5 is that they're going to add six, 
six new characters over the course supposedly of 2016 and they're all going to be time released and the more you play the game you'll earn what's called fight money which is in-game currency for playing it and you can use that to for free buy the new characters when they become available or you could just use mo real money to unlock them as well if you don't play the game as much as everyone else and you just want to get the characters right away so it's interesting. It's an interesting formula. And the question is, out of these six other fighters, right, that have been in the lineup, who's it going to be? And will some of them maybe be returning characters from Street Fighter 4 or even 3 that aren't in the game right now? And again, a, a, an interesting mix because they put characters in like Vega and M. Bison, but no Sagat and no, uh, no Balrog, right? Even though those have kind of been traditional characters since they've been around for Street Fighter 2, they've been in every installment, not in this one. Uh, and they were actually big MVPs of Street Fighter 4. So, to me, I find it interesting. I'll be honest, I'm a little disappointed. The one disappointment, no Urien. Urien has kind of gotten the shaft. Urien was one of my favorite characters from the Street Fighter 3 games, okay? And he wasn't in Street Fighter 4, and now he's not in Street Fighter 5. And maybe he will be one of those six released over the year, which would be nice. But why he, they didn't choose him, I mean, he's a cool character in my opinion. He's lanky, he's got reach, he's not necessarily super fast, but he's got some fast attacks. He's more about range and combo ability and even traps and lockdown with his projectiles and his Aegis Reflector and stuff like that. He's a unique character, he's a lot different than what the Street Fighter franchise was used to when he was released in Street Fighter uh, 2, or excuse me, three, Street Fighter 3 Second Impact is where he made his debut. And then he got actually, he actually was actually more, more uh, much improved in Street Fighter 3 Third Strike. So out of the new, this cast of Street Fighter V, my biggest disappointment was no Yuri. And I'm also very shocked to not see characters like Blanca, right? Like, I thought for sure we would see Blanca. No. And a lot of people are saying, well, Laura seems like she has a lot of moves similar to Blanca. Okay, maybe we'll see, I guess, when we get our hands on her and we actually get to mess around with that character a little bit. Um... Geef, I'm very happy Geef's in the game, because I'll tell you, Geef has been like my bre one of my bread and butter ca characters, not to say that he's always been super high tournament level worthy, but I just love him, he's, he's just an interesting character, he's got range and great normals, he's terrible with, you know, against projectiles, but he has ways around them, the grappling ability, his combo ability in every game has actually been pretty decent, so I like that Zangief character is very unique, and I'm happy that they did actually sneak him in there at the last minute, he was like the last, one of the last characters announced, right, um, Overall, the system of the game, where you have your regular super meter, which you can use to do EX attacks, and you can build it up to do a, a super, I like it, but I certainly get the feeling there's going to be some characters where you're always using those meter burn attacks, and you never get to use their super, and there's going to be other characters on the flip side, right, who are going to be, I don't need their EX moves, their EX moves aren't very good, but I'm going to build up that super because that's a huge potential to do like a combo, right? And this is the difference, I feel, between Street Fighter 4 and 5. Street Fighter 4, you had your, you know, revenge meter, which you could do your ultra, and that was the one that typically everyone ended up using during a match. A super, not so much. Maybe once in a blue moon, you would use your super meter to do a super move. You would use that mostly to do EX moves, and then you use your ultra. In this game, I don't think that's going to be the case. I think you're going to have to really pick and choose between, do I want to use EX moves or my super? Is the risk-reward worth it? You know what I mean? Um, the V-skill. It's hard for me to say an overall opinion, or give an overall opinion on V-Skills, because they're so different. Some characters have a maneuverability move, some characters have a move that absorbs a fireball, some have a special attack, and really, during this beta, I don't think it's really been fleshed out to the fullest uh, how these V-Skills are actually going to be used or utilized, you know, at, at the high level. I think what's going to end up happening is once the game finally gets released in February, and we get our hands on a version of the game where we don't have to sit there and wait in training mode to get a match, on, you know, with matchmaking and all that, that we're going to finally get to try these out in all competitive situations and see what the viability is. Maybe some of these moves could blow through supers. Maybe some of these moves really just negate a whole strategy of gameplay. We won't know until we actually get our hands on the final build of the game, okay? Uh, I really do like the visual style of the game. At first, I was skeptical, but then when I've, I've start seen it in action, I do very much like the visuals. I think they're very nicely done. It's a good mix of great graphics, those ink effects and stuff when they're doing certain attacks, but also mixed in with really higher detailed models, much more highly detailed than Street Fighter 4 was. But, my one major concern about this game, and it has to be stated, the online play, not the matchmaking, because yeah, the matchmaking's been an issue, but it seems like when they actually fix the issue with the matchmaking, it seems to work fine. The frame drops are out of control in some of these matches. Now, keep in mind, I don't know if it was because I was playing people worldwide or whatever it was during certain matches. 
but I've had, just in the beta, some of the matches I've had, massive frame drop, ch the graphics chug along, skipping frames like crazy, and input drops as well. And this is 100% accurate. I'm going to tell you a story, all right? Back when GGPO Netcode was first created, in what was it, the early to mid-90s, the Cannon Brothers, the guys who were behind SRK and Evo and all of that, one of them wrote the code for GGPO, and he really wanted to get the Netcode out there, and he wanted to sell it to Capcom so Capcom would put it into their games. So they had threads on SureYouCan.com about it, and I started playing games that had GGPO Netcode in particular. They had Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo and a few other games you could play over emulators over the internet using GGPO Netcode, okay? And... The majority of people had this wool pulled over their eyes where they thought it was like the best thing ever lag free. And it wasn't. I actually had definitive proof where it would drop frames of animation, it would drop inputs, it would have rollback, right? The three, the, the holy trinity of bullshit when it comes to fighting game gameplay. Dropped inputs, dropped frames, and rollback, okay? And everyone seemed to be kissing GGPO's ass on Shoryuken.com. And I posted up and I said, but I don't understand. When I play Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, a lot of the times I'll be in a combo and my input just won't come out. And my whole combo's dropped. Now the opponent has a free opening and does a combo because I'm expecting my input to come out and the combo to continue. I'm not holding block or whatever, right? The opponent just mashes out or does something and blows through my move now because my combo dropped. Same thing with dropped frames. If dropped frames happen, you can't see every frame of animation. You can't react to what's going on in the game and someone could get cheap hits or continue a rush down or whatever because you can't react because you can't see every active frame of when you have an opening to do something. And of course, rollback, I think everyone knows how bad rollback is where it shows something actually happening in the game. It takes it away so it actually show health disappear then it reappears and resets it's garbage and it does not belong that's the worst fucking thing ever and i posted up on sureyoucan.com and i said how are you guys all kissing ggpo's ass like how do you not realize this is in it like i'm every time i play i experience it and not to say that i had the best internet in the country but my internet wasn't bad i still had cable internet and everything back then and i was like i don't understand and i got banned from sureyoucan.com and when i questioned Sureyoucan.com staff about this, all right? My answer was plain and simple. They said, we're not going to publicly say this, Phil. Of course, this was before YouTube or whatever where I had a voice to be honest and speak the truth like this. And I was told, well, uh, we know that GGPO Netco drops inputs frequently, drops frames of animation frequently, and has rollback, and that's bad, but we're trying to sell the code, and since we're trying to make a buck, we don't want anyone to know that there's actually problems with it. And since everyone else on Sureyoucan is so dumb that they're kissing our ass, we're banning you from the website. And that's actually where I left it with them. I never really went actively went back and tried to be a part of the Shoryuken.com community after that because I was like, these guys are out to make a buck. They're not out to actually provide a quality product. They're not out for the for the the, the good looking for the, for the gamers. They're looking to make a buck for themselves. And so when I see that when I heard they were going to use this rollback GGPO like netcode for Street Fighter V, I said. Uh-oh, here we go again, because let's face it, when you play this, it's not slow motion, right? The game doesn't run in slow motion. The game doesn't actively show all the time lockups or stutters. But I can tell you, when I'm playing, all of a sudden, what happened? Or how many times I was playing, just this past time I was playing the beta, and someone did a random super. I did nothing. I just stood there holding down back, and the super hits me. And what that means is that the game dropped my input to block and just decided that, fuck it. And that's the netcode we're going to have for Street Fighter V. And it's like, the, it's, it's like there's two kinds of netcode. Slow, laggy shit, or doesn't look laggy, but still has dropped inputs and, and issues, but kind of disguises it a little bit. And that's what Street Fighter V. So all it's doing, it's putting a shiny coat of paint over the same problems we've always had with online gameplay with fighting games. And that concerns me, because people are going to be trying to learn this game, and are going to have these issues. And... Even when I was in training mode, the game was dropping frames. If you notice, when I was in training mode itself, I wasn't even in an online match, the game was dropping frames and stuttering at points. And my question is, when you actually play this offline in tournaments, is it going to do that? Because if it is, that is very bad. If that's the case, I believe they should downgrade the graphics and they should make it a simpler engine or whatever so it's not going to chug and it's not going to drop inputs and drop frames. Because when you're in a tournament setting, you need that game to be running at maximum capacity at all times. You're going to have people who are going to be fucking infuriated if they're trying to play Street Fighter V in a tournament and the fucking thing's dropping frames left and right. So for me, it's kind of like a mixed bag. I, every time I play Street Fighter V, I seem to like it a little more. I'm getting the game a lot more now. It's not about little, you know, rinky-dink pattern combos. It's more about 
the overall gameplay, the spacing, the footsies, it seems like it's going to be about matchups. It's going to be kind of more like old school Street Fighter than Street Fighter 4 ever was, okay? And I like that. I like the fact that the characters are a big mix of old and new and returning characters we haven't seen for a while. And I've liked what I've seen. But I am very concerned about the netcode and the frame stuttering and stuff like that. And to see how it will actually... Uh, the truth is we won't know. We will not know anything about how the end product will operate until February of 2016 when we all get our hands on the game and we actually get to play it, right? We'll have no clue what's really going to happen with that. But... I like what I've seen so far. I'm going to remain kind of positive and have a optimistic view that because of all these betas that Capcom is running, that the, the final product will be better. I hope so. They, keep in mind, they've never done anything like this before. The only time they've ever done beta testing for Street Fighter was in arcades. This is true. They never actually had like an open beta test where you could play on the internet and you had all this feedback and all this data from everyone it was all just local arcade testing i remember back in the day they would test like the street fighter alpha games would have arcade testings at tournaments so you go play the alpha or the beta at a tournament and give your feedback and then they would tweak the game for the final release later now of course it's a lot different environment 15 20 years later they're doing things a hell of a lot differently and that's a good thing and i'm happy to see that that, that is positive progress and i have my fingers fucking crossed that this thing comes together in february and it's a solid game and maybe it can reinvigorate things because Street Fighter's been stale. I don't care what anyone says. Oh, Evo numbers are up. And then, look at Street Fighter. It's stale, man. There's nothing new going on with Street Fighter 4. I hear about all these Street Fighter 4 tournaments. I'm like, why does anyone care? The game is stale at this point. It's played out. We need something new and refreshing. Marvel vs. Capcom 3 has been dead for years, in my opinion. It's just a flashy game to watch. It's not a game to play on a tournament level or care about. And we need something to kind of reinvigorate fighting games again the way that Street Fighter 4 did. Will Street Fighter 5 do it? We'll find out next year. But I'm feeling optimistic. I've liked what I've seen. I'm just a little skeptical. But I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt for now. And we'll see in February what happens. All right? So those are my uh, thoughts on Street Fighter V so far. I hope you enjoyed them. And if there is another beta, I will check it out. But I hope that uh, you enjoyed it. And I hope to see you in February for when the game actually releases. All right? Peace out, everybody.